contracts for a job When them the same motherfuckers that enslaved us and made it hard Been on that, been on that Y'all niggas been for self Look at the times we in They sell they soul and build for wealth They say rap was a phase That's way back in the days In the hood I was raised Only good I was saved Chest out, be brave They still want to be slaves We ain't giving it Cause we living it The last days, last days So whenever someone graces me with their time, I know how wealthy I truly am. So let's go. We're going to dive right into it. You guys know I don't like to waste no time. All right. We're here. We're locked and loaded. First, I'm bringing to the Golden Gates Gathering is Monique Rivera from the Womb of Man Empowerment. Let's go. Hey, Queen. Loving your energy. Yes. I saw you. I was like, yeah, she got that music. Thank you. So do you, beautiful. Thank you. How's it going? It's going well. You know, it's another day. I woke up. I can breathe. Amen. My face looks good. Amen. My baby is healthy. I cannot complain. <laughs> Amen. That's right. We have to be thankful. Absolutely. Grateful all the time. Yeah. Not just in the month of November, um, gratitude should be practiced every day. Every single day. Absolutely. Absolutely. I concur. <laughs> so, for the people at home um, that are not familiar with the Divine Queen as yourself, please give us a little bit more background on who you are, and um, we'll dive, we'll start from there. Well, my name is Monique Rivera, and I am the founder and CEO of Womb Women Empowerment. It's an empowerment group in New York City, East Harlem, where we get together once a month, you know, with the Queens and I facilitate workshops and we um, promote healthy mind, body and spirit. So I have like um, one of the sister Queens that guides our meditation. So we have guided meditation. We have also, um, I bring guest speakers monthly. So there's different type of things. We do vision boards, we do um, workshops on finances, you know, women in finances because Unfortunately, in the black and brown community, no one ever taught us how to be entrepreneurs and how to um, manage money. You go to school and you think they would teach you that, but they don't. They just teach you the basics, right? But they don't, they teach you to survive, not to thrive. So I'm trying to like get in a space and create a space where I can teach women how to thrive, you know, and myself included. I want to thrive. I don't want to just survive anymore. Right. Amazing response. So I love the fact um, that you're from Uptown. I'm actually from New York, too. I'm from Uptown. Um, and, you know, that's a different stomping ground, um, being raised in New York City, you know what I mean? Um, specifically, depending, specifically Harlem, you know, the five boroughs are in yes. different like, style. You know, mm -hmm. those of us who had a little bit of, like, the Westchester with us, we were able to witness <laughs> some things, but when you step into the boroughs, that's really the king of the rings, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So tell me, what was it like for you um, growing up in East Harlem, New York City? What was that like for you as a young woman? As a young child, as a woman, it was rough because everybody thought I was a white girl. <laughs> so I had to fight, you know, I had to earn my stripes, unfortunately. You got to earn your respect in the streets, especially when you're young. 
you know, so I was like, I'm not white, I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> so it was like a little rough, you know, because I had that, you know, and I have I have natural curly hair straightened out today, but I had really thick curl, like, you know, curly hair and was very light. So they was like, they were confused. It was like, you're a white girl with thick hair. I was like, no, I'm Puerto Rican, man. So, you know, it was rough, but um, I loved it because it's very multicultural. And then I ended up being best friends with the people, with one of the girls that I fought, we ended up being best friends because, you know, I earned her respect. And just once you earn people's respect in the hood, it's a wrap. Like you're just able to like live comfortably in your neighborhood without having to worry about people messing with you. Obviously, we're not in a space like that anymore. We're adults now. But when you're younger, you have to earn those stripes. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> so right. I hung up those gloves. <laughs> <laughs> you have to hang them up. You have to hang them up. So now that you've, um, you know, you're fully walking within your passion and purpose. What inspired you to become an advocate, especially for WOMB, WOMB, yes. and empowerment? That is very empowerful, the fact that you spell it correctly. I mean, we're going to dive a little bit more into that, but what triggered this? What came up with this concept? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing you, but I'm trying to grasp what you said. You said, what inspired oh, me? I got that part for WOMB, right. right? Much better, yeah, can yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can, beautiful. Okay. So what inspired me, to be honest, was um, I saw the need for, I started to notice that women were having a lot of friction. There was a lot of cattiness amongst women. And I wanted to break that chain. I wanted to like set a place where women can be themselves unapologetically and not have to feel the need to compete with each other because we're all beautiful in our own right. You know, God has given us God, universe, divine energy has given us all a gift. We all gifted. So if we come together collectively, there's more power, you know, in numbers. So I just felt the need for it. I felt like, man, this community, I'm tired of seeing women tearing each other down. I want to create a space where we can build each other up, where we can help each other out, whether it's getting out of a domestic violent relationship, whether it's um, getting out of depression or anxiety, because myself, I suffered from anxiety for 10 years. Like, hard, I was going through it with the anxiety. I was getting panic attacks. I was going through a lot. So I just felt that this would be something that was conducive, especially for women of color. All women are invited, but especially women of color, because we have a lot of issues, a lot of underlying trauma, things that we dealt with growing up, whether it was in a single parent home or growing up in a two-family home where your father was being abusive to your mother or vice versa, or there was drugs or there was alcohol. So many things that we experience, you know, and these traumas, unfortunately, if we don't get to the root of it, then we will never evolve. So I just felt that there was a need for this. And I'm so blessed. It was something that God placed in my spirit to do um, for this community. And I'm so blessed because he opened up those doors for me. So I'm able to meet with these women in, um, in Taino Towers once a month and facilitate workshops. And I give them resources, whether it's for housing or for mental health. So I tap into things because I'm not just the CEO and founder of Womb Women Empowerment. I'm also a teacher in my district in this neighborhood. So it's, it's a special, beautiful thing. I teach in the daytime, you know, my beautiful students. And then I, in the evening, I try to empower my sister queens. And also, I think it's important that as women, we stick together, you know, because, you know, they got men, they always had like the basketball, they had their own little stuff going on. And you never really saw that cattiness between the men. But the women, I wanted to break that. Like, let's just love each other. Let's encourage one another, you know? Yes, I love that. <laughs> thing um unity divine um that's such a beautiful thing unity um through the divine feminine um being able to help us heal um a lot of us do have underlining trauma um for being raised in single parent homes two parent homes um drugs fighting homelessness a lot of different things you know what i mean yes. so um i i have to give you your your flowers because you know that's the new thing Thank you, Queen. You know, because it's just amazing the fact that um, you've been able to step into your purpose because this is a very powerful mission, especially for the melanated women, um, mm -hmm. the women of the diaspora. 
Um, our yes. pain is rooted through generations and generations and generations, whether we realize that or not. That's where the cattiness comes in. And then placed upon us is the European idealistic of how a woman should be. Um, so that also interferes with our capabilities and who we think we should be and what we want to be. And there's so many different battles. It's hard enough just being a woman, but being right. a woman of the diaspora hits a little differently. So big ups to you, Queen. I'm very proud and honored that I was able to meet you here on, on the Instagram world. Thank you, Queen. I appreciate what you're doing as well. I appreciate yes. what you're doing, so, so big ups to you as well. Yes, thank you. So let's dive in a little bit more. So what made you decide to call it W-O-M-B, Woman Empowerment? Um, That's very okay. important. So womb, obviously, every woman has a womb, whether we choose to bear children or not. We all have a womb, and that is the root of our creativity. You know, that is the, the womb. If you look at it in a, in a spiritual way, the womb is where our creativity is at, right? Creation. Um, so birth, birth can be not just a birth of a physical, of a child, birth can be the birth of a dream, you know what I mean? The birth of an idea. So I think that that was something that a lot of women can resonate with. But also when I started playing around with the acronyms, with the letters, it dawned on me spiritual, ooh, my hands are standing. It dawned on me and I was like, you know, womb. I, it was funny because I had been playing with different names and for some reason one day as I was praying and meditating, literally I heard you would name it womb like on the spiritual world I was like whoa right. and when i felt that i said i have to be obedient to the spirit this is what spirit is telling me i have to be obedient so when i started playing with the word womb um it the acronyms w women's opinions matter because so women's opinions matter because we're fearless because we're nurturers we're resilient we're beautiful you know we're womenpreneurs and the list goes on and on so I like that. I can look for one. I have goosebumps all over my body. I wish I could show you all the hairs are standing up because um, something that you said here that's so beautiful is that um, during your meditation, um, it was brought to you by the divine to call yes. it woman. Um, w O M B, because women's opinion matters because. And it matters because of so many different um, yes. unlimited everlasting reasons, right? Yes. And the fact that you took the initiative to listen to your inner spirit um, just shows us how highly crafted you are within your purpose. And we have to mm -hmm. give you a round of applause for that. <laughs> so how does the journey begin um, through this healing process and truly um, becoming a divine woman um, so you can really facilitate your purpose. Does this journey start from within or is it part of the community you're in? Where, where does this begin? It started from within because I started to realize that I was blocking my own self from my own blessings. You know, a lot of times we, we, um, we move in fear as opposed as moving in faith, you know, the fear to fail or the fear to not get, you know, to not be able to do it because you don't think you're capable of doing something. So we block our own selves, you know, we really set our own blocks. So I was like, you know what, I'm tired of moving in fear. I'm not going to move like that. I need to, you know, move in faith, you know, and I just realized I needed to be accountable for my own actions, but also for my ancestors' actions. We have to tap into that. Our ancestors are the ones that set the pay for us, you know, the way for us. And, um, you know, they're like the, um, we, we have to be like the phoenix, you know what I'm saying? We have to be like the phoenix. We have to rise from our ashes. And that's when I started to say, you know what? I need to like, I need to deal with my trauma because I had daddy issues because my parents divorced when I was five years old. And at five years old, they try to diagnose me with depression. Five years old. How you diagnose a child with depression at five years old? Because right. when daddy left, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I was crying all the time. So I had these issues. So then because of that, I began to feel like no man would be good enough. I always thought that a man would just leave me. So I was afraid to be in a relationship. So then at a young age, I fell in love with someone. And unfortunately, I experienced domestic violence. And I am not a victim. I am a victorious. I am a, a survivor of domestic violence. And because of that, that's when I began to think, like, I have to heal from all this trauma, and I have to forgive, and I have to release. 
so that this way I can be able to evolve and be able to grow spiritually and move, you know, okay. accordingly. I'm sorry, give me one moment, please. No worries. What's the matter, guys? Hi, Carmen. I love you too, Carmen. I gotta lower it a little bit. I'm so sorry about that. No worries. Um, no worries. I'm a, I'm, I'm a mom, so um, so I apologize about that. No worries. So, <laughs> Hello, that's the best part of being a woman. You get it. There you go. You see, that comes with it, beautiful queen. No yes. reason to apologize. That's part of it. You see, we just multitask as another thing. <laughs> Women's right. opinions matter because we multitaskers. <laughs> right, I know, I know. It's that mom, like, you know, you're doing, like, a million things at once. Um, you're still inspiring to um, keep that reflection of self, but yes. you also have a new reflection on yourself because um, you're a mother. So um, let's talk a Excellent. little bit about that because, like you said, um, you experienced domestic violence and that made you realize that, okay, I need to part ways and um, mm -hmm. do something that's going to be healthier for me and the child. Um, right. How do you encourage women who are currently within that space to make that step? Because that is a very difficult step. And, you know, domestic violence comes in many different levels. It's not always physical abuse. Oh, you froze. Um, sometimes it's emotional, mental, spiritual abuse. You, you oh, froze, you queen. Oh, sorry. There you um, go. You're coming back. <laughs> I said, because so, um, you know, sometimes um, domestic violence is not always physical. Um, it can be emotional, mental, spiritual, right? So mm -hmm. how do you empower women to make that first leap of faith? Because that's what mm -hmm. it really is, um, you know? So this is what I always say. I always show them grace and love. I never want them to feel like they're being judged. I just, I build them up. And I remind them how beautiful they are. I remind them that God created them. And you're, I'm like, you're divine energy. And you know what? You need to love yourself and respect yourself and honor yourself more than anything else first. You cannot pour from an empty cup. So I encourage them to fill their own cup up. And I tell them, you have to do the, you know, no woman wants to hear like, oh, um, you need to leave him because he ain't worth nothing because he's toxic. You don't want to hear that because you're already feeling that about your man. What you do need to hear, and it's just my opinion, is, listen, queen, is he adding value to your life? You know, are the goods outweighing the bads or are your bads outweighing the goods in this relationship? You know, do you feel complete? Does he, because no man is ever going to make you happy or complete. We came complete into this world. We came with what we need right inside of us, right? The universe, God blessed us with everything that we need right inside of us. They can add to our happiness. They can add to our value. We can complement each other. But if they're not adding to your value and they're not complimenting you, then you need to take a step back and you need to understand, like, this is no longer healthy for me. See, like, I did it. I went through it at a young age. I was 18 when I had my first son. So, you know, the, the violence was before I got pregnant. And then I turned around and ended up pregnant and thought it was going to change, you know, because it was my first, my first boyfriend, my first everything. So I was like, oh, he's going to change. No, he got violent with me when my son was three months old. And that was it. Because at this point now, the love that I felt for you no longer mattered because my son is here now. I need to protect my child. I cannot allow my son to be raised in a toxic environment. And I was blessed that God gave me the strength and the, and the wisdom to leave when I did. Because I could have still stuck around and tried to save the family. No, I was saving my son from seeing and hearing these things because it's not healthy, it's not conducive for their mental or emotional growth, you know? And I left and that was the best choice I made. And now, you know, we cordial, we cordial. I've forgiven him, we cordial, you know, we have a good friendship and it's all good. There's no hatred there, you know? Um, but I moved on years, a couple of years later and I ended up getting married.
No, I, I hear you. Okay. Yeah, it looks like you're buffering. The only thing that um, I'm grateful for that toxic relationship because it helps you appreciate a good relationship. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. the experience, I mean, don't get me wrong, I didn't like the violence or whatever, but it taught me, it made me stronger and it made me wiser and it made me grateful, like for a good man. Like now, you can't know what a good man is if you didn't have a bad one before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So sometimes you right. gotta go through these things in order to help you grow, help your journey. Absolutely. Hi, Queen. Before you leave us, yeah. I got I some of my sister queens that. saying hello. Yes. And before you leave us tonight, um, what makes you smile? Before you leave us tonight, oh my what God, makes I you smile? Everything. Literally. I'm just like, <laughs> I wake up. As soon as I open my eyes, I'm like so filled with gratitude. I'm like, thank you for another day. I'm so grateful. And I just smile because I'm happy. I'm alive. I'm healthy. I have um, healthy children, thank God. I have two jobs, plus this woman empowerment. I just love to, I'm always smiling. And let me tell you, sis, I've been through some stuff. I've had some losses these last few years, unfortunately. My younger brother passed away. He got hit by a drunk driver when he was crossing. I've had some real serious losses. I went into like a little, a little depression mode for a little while, but I had to shake myself out of that because I had to show up for this platform. You know, there's women that, literally like depend on me in a sense like they want that motivation they need that that little push you know so i had to show up i had to put my own feelings aside my own, don't get me wrong they respected my space i took the time that i needed to like try to process the death and to heal but i lost my brother my best friend from cancer my aunt i've had so many losses over the last few years that if it wasn't because of my relationship with divine you know with the the, the faith that i have I always say, if it wasn't for that, I would have been depressed or I would have been in a mental ward. Who knows? Because it was really hard. It was some heavy blows. But, you know, like the phoenix, I rise. Right. Yes. And I'm definitely um, sending my condolences um, to you and your family. Um, lots of healing, lots of love and strength. Um, unfortunately, it's very sad. It can be sad when we lose people that um, we love in the physical state, but we know that they're always on our side, on the other side, on our Amen. side. You know what I mean? So that yes. always makes us very yes. grateful. Um, tell us, where can we find you in Instagram and how can people get connected with you? Um, for any woman who may come across this, how can they connect with you um, to be part of the movement? Um, they can just follow my page at Womb Women Empowerment, which you, you, you know, you have me already. And once they follow my page, if they're ever interested in coming out to our workshops, they're more than welcome to come out. Um, we usually meet. It was every second Saturday of the month, but now I'm working weekends, so we're meeting every second Friday of the month instead. So it'll be evening, Friday evening. And we have a nice little space that's, that's provided for us on 122nd Street, East Harlem. Um, between 122nd and 123rd on 3rd Avenue in Taino Towers. If they're interested, they can just drop me a DM, slip into my DM, <laughs> and I'll give them all the information that they need, you know? And it's a beautiful thing. Actually, we're going to have a, a Friendsgiving pop-up shop. So if you have any merch and you're interested in selling your merch, just holler at me because I'm going to be renting tables. So I'm going to have the space and I'm going to have tables. We're going to have a Friendsgiving pop-up shop. So yeah. I got a couple of vendors that are going to be there selling their, their, you know, their merch. Yes, it's been so beautiful gathering with you tonight. And um, I will be in touch. Send me your flyer um, for your pop-up shop. Mm -hmm. I have another page. Um, I'll throw it up on there and post it. Tag East Harlem so anybody can get familiar and know who to reach out to for that too. Um, thank you so much for connecting with me tonight. And um, Queen, keep it inspiring out there in the world. You truly are a God-given gift, and you truly are a luminary. Thank you so much, Queen. Peace. I hope to connect with you soon. Yes, we will. Okay, take care. Peace. Good night. Monique oh, good night. Rivera! I love her spirit. She's all about the divine feminine. She's all about raising um, the vibrations, healing, and conquering.
But you know, as we have the divine feminine, we also have the divine feminine, um, divine masculine, and like double feminine. Listen, we run the world, fellas. That's it. Y'all just got to give it up. But um, queens, you know, last month was in honor of all women who've experienced domestic violence. So um, I'm sending you lots of love, mental empowerment, spiritual empowerment, and please make sure you tap in um, with Monique. But like I said, we're going to bring up some divine fem masculine energy, I, a divine masculine energy, and let's go, La Picasso! <laughs> Yeah. They said no to our neighbor. What up, Anonymous? <laughs> What's poppin'? What <laughs> What's good, ma? You already know I'm just G-magging on the sleeves. <laughs> yeah, yo, yeah, shout, shout out to your last guest. I love positive women, you know what I mean? Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Um, the divine women connecting with each other, helping each other grow. And just really getting the mission across, you know, um, unity, um, unity within the community. That's so empower um, empowering and important. So, um, yeah, that, that's, love, that's what my next love. album is. About. Let's get into it because, you know, I don't like to waste any more time. Um, but let's let people know because I brought you to the platform before. But for those who are not familiar um, with your amazingness, let them know who you are and what you're all about. My name is La Picasso. My name, I changed my name not too long ago. My name was MC Lotto. I did songs with, um, the first song the Locks was ever on was a song with me on it. So, you know, goes from there. I did songs with everybody from Pat Pools, Granddaddy IU, Baz Bunny, Akinelli, uh, Mr. Cheeks. Um, I can't, I can't even remember everybody, but I'm also a producer. I'm also a director and a photographer. So let's go. And a ghostwriter. is fully locked and loaded. I have was honored and graceful um, to come into communication with him during my journey here in life. Um, so this is someone I know personally. Yes. This is a great person. Um, he's a great artist. Um, he's always been Thank you, baby. Um, since I've met him. So, you know, being raised in Queens, you know, you're a rapper, you're an entrepreneur, you're looking to explore more life. Um, tell us what inspired you to tap into the style of boom bap rap. Um, you, you said trap and boom. I hear you had trap boom bap or just boom bap. Oh, sorry, I don't know why it's not good today. Hold on. Yeah, that's the uh, that's that's the uh, the evils that be. Nah, they can't fuck <laughs> with me. Um, so like a. Not <laughs> So um, I said, what inspired you to tap into the boom bap rap style? Yo, the boom, yeah, the boom bap was from you know the beginning, beginning of um when I got into hip hop and in, in the golden era in the nineties. You you just y'all just witnessed the battle between KRS and Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane won. All right, um, <laughs> listen, let me let me just explain something. You see how you saw it, right? Yes. I went and watched you, after we was on that live. Okay, well, Big Daddy Kane's breath control. This is that's what an, a real MC does. You can get on stage and your breath control, and you can sing all the lyrics to your to your, your word, you know, and the words, and, and kill it in front of an audience. That's what a real MC is, and he demonstrated that. 
And that, that, that inspires me. We got to give a round of applause to the greatest. We cannot ever forget those who um, paved the way for us. So for those who are not familiar, what is boom bap rap? Well, boom bap, boom bap is like the golden era hip hop, like um, like uh uh, pre DJ Premier beats with like M O P um uh um, Pete Rock, Seal Smooth, you know what I'm saying? Like if, if y'all familiar with any of that, and it and it's just it's just mostly regular rap, like it's not regular, but all right, let me let me to give you a history lesson. When rap first came, was on the radio, people used to rap like, oh, going on across the sea. And then when Rakim came out, he he started rapping like a trumpet. Du -du 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 -du. You know, going all over the place, standing by the speaker. Suddenly I had this fever, wasn't me the either, but I'm a man. So that's when the style started switching up. You know what I'm saying? So now people started getting more creative because, you know, they took from him. And then came Big Daddy Kane style and, and you know, everybody, Coogee Rap, all these rappers, KRS, everybody. And then now they're creating something different. You know what I'm saying? Do Ja Rule and certain artists that were singing. Now came the singing style and, you know, all the different type of styles that's out now. You know, the baby, yes. little baby, all of them. They need it because these young folks don't know out here. We got to give that knowledge. It's very important um, for anything Thanks. you're doing that you understand what you are really doing. So um, I brought that up because your latest album is called Trap vs. Boom Back. Am I correct? Uh-huh. So yep. What is trap music? Trap music is... Um... To me, it's just the new music that they're doing, and it's like the beat is a little different. It's a little like, you know what I mean? It's it's just it's just like y'all want to call shots or you want to call cops. If you got beef toe blocks for the ops, I was on the block selling. You know what I mean? The the, the melody is different. It's different from boom bap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's trap rap. They got drill. They got all that drill. Is just like you know hard beats, like just a different style of of, of boom bap. But it's all music. It's all rap. But when I come from an era, I'm a little older, so I can't, I'm not going to just do ignorant music. I'm going to drop some jewels in my music. I'm going a, I'm to a talk about subjects. I'm going to do what I know. I was raised on Public Enemy and, you know, we had different groups. So I just want to show the younger people that are older do can do it and you can do both combined. So it's really not verses, but I did the verses so it would be more interesting, so it would grab people's ears and eyes more, you know? Right, and that was very, very um, intelligent marketing skill. Thank you. Great response, because, um, so we would say the trap is more of like those 808 knocking beats, right? More, yeah, more or less. More or less, great. So actually, I have one of your songs um, pulled up here from the Trap vs. Boom Bap. And the song that we played coming in is also from Trap vs. Boom Bap called Last Days, for those who are not familiar. But let's really talk about it because it was a big boss move, what you did. So um, we're going to go right into it. You know what I mean? Um, after these nice, friendly commercials. <laughs> <laughs> big boss moves. Okay. Fuck cops, cause they hate blacks. I just bank tracks. Be shorty to my 
roll, it's time to break back. I stay facts, just keep it up. Yeah. Gravity be keeping me up, no average. See the savage me? Yeah. That means I'm not giving a fuck. Business money, get behind it. I don't just flow through the call through. Wouldn't understand this is all smooth. You wanna try a track like this? It's called call shoot. Track is from at beast.com. This is all smooth. Let's go. Boss moves. Big boss moves. Yeah, I feature him. I feature my girl, Superstar Didi. You know what I mean? I've been working with Superstar Didi for years. That's my home girl. You know what I mean? She on the record with me and Cheeks. She also on the record with me and Papoose. I put on, I put on joints. You know what I'm saying? I put people on joints, trying to blow them up. You know what I'm saying? Right. We don't hold nobody back. Right. Congratulations. That was a beautiful, soulful track. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? Huh? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I hear you now. Okay. I hear you now. I don't know what's up with the internet tonight, but um, in Boss Moves, you state that y'all lame, y'all sound the same, I changed the game, been around this thing. How do you feel about cooker, cookie cutter rappers? No, thank you. No, oh, I just, I don't like anybody. I don't like anybody that's not supposed to be doing it. Like, honestly, I think the talent, the talent, like if, if you can sing, if you're a singer that can sing, I think you should supposed to be a star. If, if you can't sing, I don't think you should be a star. I don't think that's the profession for you. And that's, that's where this game is messed up. You know what I mean? Yes, there's a lot of um, cookie cutting. Would you agree? Mm-hmm. Okay, so as an independent artist um, that is very successful and very high notarized, um, how did you reach this level of success? What steps did you take? Um, I just I just don't worry about it. Like I'm to the point where fame doesn't matter. I just love doing music, and I put my music out for the world to see, and I'm going to shoot videos. If it catch on, it catch on. I keep going on people's platforms like yours, your, yours that's real, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and one of us is going to make it. One of us real people is going to make it. So when one real person make it, they pull every, all the other real people up. And that's what happens. So eventually, the light will shine. That's so beautiful. Um, I love the fact um, that you utilize um, a lot of, you know, you have great storytelling in your music. You have great lyricism, a powerful message. Do you believe that your music is positive and inspires the culture to cultivate that strong, honest authenticity through rap? Most definitely. Most definitely. If you listen to any time you think I'm going to go to a negative place, it always ends up in a positive place. Sometimes, see, you got to be, these days, you got to be kind of, you got to be kind of um, tricky to catch the ears of, of people who think you can't be preachy. 
You know what I mean? To get through to the young people. So you can't be too preachy. My next album is going to be more preachy, but it's going to be, because I'm working on the album. It's no, it's no, it's going to be no name calling to women. No, no, no B word to the women. It's going to be, it's going to be really over the top. So this album is, I plan on getting banned everywhere. So it's called Black Ball. So I plan on getting banned for this album. Cause I'm stating all facts, all truth, nothing, nothing, no, no tongue holding, no, no tongue, no tongue holding on this one, man. And I'm uplifting my people. You know what I'm saying? At the same time. It's so important that we guide um, the youth, you know, um, especially because music is so powerful and it really shows us what happens to the community based off of what we're hearing in the music. You know what I mean? Um, right. to play a country song. They're usually typically talking about falling in love, meeting a girl at the bar, probably did a little dance with her and took her home, you know, but then he became her wife versus a rap song where he just says, you know, she's a, she's a B. I smashed last night and passed her to my home. That's a whole yeah. different environment. <laughs> Yeah, and I listen. I just I got those kind of songs too, but I just feel like rap. I just feel like rap has enough of that. So I am. I feel I'm so lyrical that I can go. I could go to the left, and I could do, and I could do all the positive things. I don't even have to do that no more. I I never had to do it, but I'm gonna show you how talented I am and how people gonna rock with this music. Even the thugs, everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like they're gonna rock with it. Beautiful, beautiful. So before you leave us and within these last moments, it's so important that I know and that the viewers at home know what truly makes La Picasso, Mr. MC Lotto smile. Oh, uh, a fine woman. <laughs> Look, a fine woman like yourself, baby. Look. You know, what's what's a man's weak? What's a real man's weakness? A woman always. What? Listen, Chris Rock said it. Oh, somebody, somebody said. It. I think Chris Rock said it. If a man, if a man could live in a shoe, a, a cardboard box, and never had to buy a house, and he could get a woman, then he would live in a cardboard box. That's that's how powerful women are. Yo, you're so silly, Lana. Some things just never change, you know what I mean? And that's one thing I love about your spirit. I was so happy and grateful to be able to find you here on Instagram because sometimes, you know, when you change numbers and you move around, you lose connections with people. So that's one thing. My number the same, baby. My number been the same for 25 years. Oh, you still have the same number? That's yes, ma'am. I always change my number, and I'm always changing my phone. Look, so. Bill, Bill Collector's always calling me. I ain't him. Yo, they cannot find me, bro, because I stay changing this number. You heard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, it's all good. You feel it's me? all Those good. People looking for you because they won't find me, and then when I get the when the come up is right, I'll give them a call, and I'll be like, yo. What if you say I owed you again? All right, here you go. But, but look, an anonymous, you know, you know everything is connected now. And your phone number is connected to your email, connected to this. So that they, they they got a tracking device on us through all of this. You know what I mean? They can keep tracking. They ain't gonna get not a dime, penny, or a nickel from me. <laughs> but we are so happy and grateful to have you here tonight um, for another session of the Golden Gates Gathering. Even though this is not the last days, this is currently our last. Let us know where can we find you. Um, this is actually what the Trap versus Boom Back album looks like for those viewers at home um, who want to see it. Um, that's his YouTube. And um, let us know where we can find your music and listen to you more. Yeah, you can um, find me on all platforms. La Picasso, I sp you know, I spell it L O T. P A C O S S O. You can also go to my website, Trap Verse Boom Bat Beats .com, and you can purchase my music. Some music you can get for free. My new album, I'm only selling it for five dollars on my website. I also will be selling merch on my website. And you can follow me on Instagram, Lot Picasso. You can follow me on Facebook, Lot Picasso. You can follow me on Twitter, Original Lotto. And um, I'm gonna change that to Lot Picasso because. 
you know, I, was, I just can't get rid of the lotto so much. <laughs> but I'm going to get rid of it, though. No problem, honey. I appreciate yeah. you. I'm so grateful. Thank you, baby. Hey. All right. Lord, I'm praying for the tables. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, I'm so happy and grateful to have you here on my platform tonight. Yes, um, I, I can know, hear you can well. You hear can well? you hear me? Okay. Thank yes, you. Yes, you sound great and you look amazing. I'm so happy and grateful to have you on the platform tonight. Um, I met you. Um, actually, I found your page um, by tapping into a spiritual line. Um, where everyone communes together and we were all like, follow this person, follow that person. And I was like, well, I definitely gotta follow her because we got the same name. You know what I mean? Not knowing um, how amazing you truly are. Um, you know what I mean? And um, I definitely have to give you your kudos and your flowers right now. Um, you're absolutely phenomenal. I love everything that you're representing. And um... <laughs> for those who are not familiar at home, Please let us know who you okay, are. Okay, for those who don't know about. me, my name is Lynn Hobson. I go by the name of Money Lynn. Um, I was born and raised in Washington, D.C. I went to Howard University, got kicked out of school, ended up in New York, New Jersey. I've uh, been here for 20 year, 25 years. I've been in the industry for 25 years. Um, I became a publicist because I was an intern first, became a, a junior publicist at a PR firm. And uh, then I went to go work for a record label on Diaz Entertainment, a, a Brooklyn-based label through Epic Records. And um, went to go work with Mike Tyson and then I started off on my own. Yes. <laughs> so that's very, very beautiful. So what made you um, tap into, wait, first of all, you went to Howard, so. Ooh, I was definitely trying to go there, sis, but I ended up in Temple. Temple was great. <laughs> Congratulations to that. Um, I said Temple's great, the pin uh, relays. Yes, yes, absolutely. I'm a Temple owl. There's no shame in my game. Um, but I definitely, yes, how yes, is yes. HBCU, correct? Yes, yeah, so when I was studying, like, learning about colleges, I, being from New York, I assumed Temple was an HBCU because it was in Philadelphia. You see what I'm saying? So I didn't do enough research. You know what I mean? That's what happens when you don't know what you're doing. So, <laughs> but um, yes, um, kudos to you. So what made you tap into like, you know, the world of PR? Like, what is that really all about? What inspired you to be this yes. public relations? So what correct? inspired me to become a publicist was I read a book by... Uh, a former publicist, her name is Terry Williams, uh, T-R-R-I-E, and then Williams. She had an agency called the Terry Williams Agency, and she had the personal touch, everything you need to succeed in today's fast-paced business world. I read the book from cover to cover in one day, and I fell in love with the concept of being a publicist. Um, so back then we didn't have email, so I wrote her a letter asking her for an internship, and the rest is history. Um, in terms of what we do, we do uh, one of three things or all three. We do image consulting, 
We do media placements, making sure that you're promoted to newspapers, magazines, local television, local radio, and the internet. Um, and we do event planning. Um, so event planning for me are kind of like uh, the My 16s on MTV or funerals. I do a lot of high-end funerals and production. And my job is to promote, my job as a publicist is to promote people, places, and things. And that's it. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a mom, so <laughs> to a toddler, so she's like, she's patient okay. with me, but she's like, okay, lady, you know what I mean? Off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Not right now, princess. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a girl. So, yeah, so she's definitely like, um, excuse me, miss, I need my time. And she's a Libra, yeah. so you know all yeah. about them, you know what I mean? So, uh, so why is it important for individuals tapping into the media entertainment realm to have a publicist? Well, if a publicist is, is uh, everyone's way of um, basically skipping the in front of you. No? I'm sorry. Can you repeat okay. that for me? Give me one second, please. Hey, hey. Hi, Mr. Horton. So, um, where do we leave off while she's while she's coming back? So, what did she ask me? Why is it important to have a publicist? It's important to have a publicist so that you can get the line. You know, it's like you're in line to go to, let's just say, Madison. Square Garden and you don't have a publicist, a publicist basically skips you to the front of the line. A publicist basically uh, promotes whatever it is that you're promoting, your brand, your product, your music. Hi, Miss Mo Money. My, one of my clients is on now. Uh, Miss Mo Money, she's on, uh, she was on Love and Hip Hop and she was in a female girl group called BBOD and now she is a solo artist and an and an on-air personality. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I actually seen her before on that show. Um, that's the one from New York, right? Yes, the Love and yes, Hip Hop yeah. New York one. Yes. Yeah, I seen her. So that's really awesome. Um, yeah, because you know, especially for indie artists, um, who independent artists who are currently on the rise, how do you feel like um, they can navigate and being able to connect with? a true publicist, especially when the internet is so, I don't want to say overwashed, but you have all these people coming to you and saying, hey, I can do this for you. Hey, I can do that for you. Hey, I can do this for you. And like you're pulled a million places. You're not really sure what to go. Like, how would you advise them in connecting with such a How would you like advise yourself? them to connect with me? 90% um, yeah. of my clients I meet on social media. You know? So even before there was... Oh, okay. Instagram, like how we're on Instagram now, I met a lot of uh, clients on Twitter, then then uh, Facebook. Which came first, Twitter or Facebook? I think Twitter came. MySpace. MySpace, then Twitter, then MySpace. Facebook, and now Instagram. And hopefully one day I'll get some clients from TikTok, you know? Nice. Yes, absolutely. And amazing responses to the question. Thank you for your patience no problem. with me. I really appreciate you. Um, so when you're looking to connect with clients yourself, do you just take any client or do you take a seat back and you're like, hmm, let me process this. Is this going to be someone I can really help grow? Or does it depend on client per client? Basis? It depends on what my what's who 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 or what is on my current client roster, making sure that there's no conflict of interest. Um, it depends on what I have on my plate. It depends on the energy that I have with the person. It's a vibe, you know. It's it's whether or not I believe in the person, whether or not I like their product, whether or not I like their music. I turn down probably fifty percent of the clients that come my way potential client. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Wow. That says a lot. Um, you know what I mean? Because it's not yes. always about just making the money. You know, this is a true yes. business that you're running, right? So um, let's talk. Let's dive in a little bit more. Because yes, you're um, a publicist, but I also know that you're a woman advocate for women empowerment and yes, correct. Violence. Yes, is that correct. So, um, what inspired you to take on that? Um, I took on the narrative of women empowerment because a lot of people uh, scream, you know, I'm all for women empowerment. I'm all for women empowerment, and there really aren't. You know, and at first, instead of, you know, sitting back and having an attitude and taking the perspective of, oh, you know, I said, you know, let me be the example. Let me show, you know, these females how it's done. You know, real women and woman empowerment is really supporting the next woman. And I strive to be, you know, the epitome of that. Um, in terms, the second part of to answer your question is what inspired me to create the Black and Blue Foundation, which is the Domestic Violence Foundation, is because I am, you know, a survivor of domestic violence. I was in a situation where I was dating someone and I no longer wanted to be with them. And so um, they hurt me really bad to the point where, you know, my friends had to, you know, come outside and find me and basically scrape me up off the ground. And then dealing with, you know, the court system, you know, of, of making sure that I got that final restraining order, you know, the encouragement, dealing with the trauma, you know, it's very discouraging. You know, you think, you know, is it me? Am I crazy? You know, um, and that was my purpose reasoning for starting the foundation. Hey, Kimberly Noel. Wow. Phenomenal woman, and that's absolutely you. So you're a PR, you're a woman empowerment advocate. Is there anything else on the roster that I may have missed? Um, yes, 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 yes. I have my book, uh, Diary of a Hip Hop Publicist. Yay! Available. On my website, lynnhobson.com. Um, it commemorates my first 20 years in the music industry. It's an inspirational book. Um, and I give back to the community by having these enormous pop up shops in New Jersey where I give vendors an opportunity to promote and market their brands. Hey, Tony. Yes, and let, we're going to talk a little bit more about your pop-up hey, shows um, because I've been seeing you promoting that, like, phenomenally amazing. Uh, I've never seen a pop-up <laughs> show so extravagant before. Um, you know what I mean? You really, you really bring it all out, Queen. What kind of work does it take for you to do that? Good job, sweetie. What type of work does it take for you to really get these type of, you know, high profile individuals at your pop-up show then you have people from the community selling merchandise how are you um I, it, I use my own money um to put it together um from the venue to security to the djs i hire the host i i i sincerely believe that time is money you know um and at the end the the the, the expense or the overhead is really high the profit is not that large but you know it's growing like the pop-up shop is growing you know so quickly um that hopefully soon I'll, I'll be able to get it under control but it just seems to come together you know like god knows my heart and um <laughs> i'm I sometimes walk in there and i don't even have the list yes, of vendors i might like, work it out jesus <laughs> if they come in here and set up the <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I literally just give it to God. Yeah. You get the idea. Yeah. You do some yeah. of the motion. Thank you. Yes. And then you let God finish the rest. Amazing. Amazing. So you're an author. You're a publicist. Okay. Thank you. You're a serial entrepreneur. Um, you're divine feminine. That's okay. I'm so sorry. Um. So, um, okay, goddess, no more. No, thank you. I literally had a conversation That's so with her sweet. about all of this. It's just me and her every day, day in and day out. So, you know, um, 
anytime I take a little bit of attention off of her, she's like, excuse me, miss. <laughs> you need to bring it back to me. But um, I'm letting her know, like, these are very important stepping stones that I'm making, the seeds that I'm planting um, for not just to truly cultivate the life that That's I want her to have. You know what I mean? Um, so how are you able to network? Like, how do you make that happen, like, to meet? you know, high quality profile people. Like, let's just say for me, I'm a random artist. I want to meet high quality people like yourself. Well, the first thing you do is that? follow people on social media that you look up to that live in your area, you know? And once you find those people, look out for, for events that they're having, you know? Start investing in that person's brand. And then when they throw up a flyer, go to their event. And then network. And then from there, it'll take you to the next yeah. event, to the next event, to the next event. And then you turn around and you're like, wow, I'm here, you know? That alone. Wow. I, I have a big question to ask you because you work with artists. Do you think it's important that artists stay independent or get a deal from a major um, label? So from my perspective, it's stay independent. Uh, there's really no real benefit anymore from um, being a part of a record label because their job is to market and promote you. But now that there's social media, there really isn't a need to be signed. You have all the tools that the record label is using right at your fingertips, you know. But a lot of times when I get in a recording artist, um, you know, I don't really have to do that type of research. I'm coming to, they're coming to me as it. Nice. Nice. So before you leave us tonight, Miss um, Lynn Hobson, please let me know what makes you smile. What makes me smile is my dog, Mr. Love Muffin. Um, flowers. Mm -hmm. He's very what cute. else makes me smile? Um, looking up at the sun in the sky and 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 watching the waves. On the smile, you know, Beautiful. the little things. You know? yes. Shout out to Mister Love Muffin. <laughs> very cute dog. Um, kind of gives you that like, uh, you yes, know, there's yes, no place yes. like home vibe, you know? So that's very beautiful. So I definitely will be tapping back in with you um, on the personal level. You know, I'm very honored to have been able to connect with you. Um, let us know, how can people connect with you? Where can they find you? Um, how can they be part of anything that you're doing? Um, so they Just follow me on all social media platforms at Lynn Hobson, L-Y-N-N-H-O-B-S-O-N. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for your essence and your divine unity with me tonight, Queen. And You're welcome. And, and I commend you, so you for being a single mother and juggling it all. I know it's not easy, but... The fact that you're on here doing what you want to do and showing and being an example to your daughter, I commend you for that. All right. Thank you. I really and have a great night. That. Thanks, you Thank too. You, Queen. Bye -bye. Have a blissful Bye -bye. night. Peace. Remember, stay a woman, Mary. I know I'm a gazillionaire. Y'all better talk to me nice out here in the world because I'm making big mook kahunga moves out here. You feel me? Not little, 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 you know, big kahunga moves out here. You know what I'm talking about? You got to be bold. See, I'm, it's, so, it's so powerful. The earrings are falling off. You know what I mean? I got to leave y'all with a one touch. Y'all know I should have had it loaded up, but I didn't because baby girl in the background. I get really excited when I do these interviews because um, it's important to do what you love, right? And this is what I love doing is communing with the world, um, being in touch with people of positive energy, people of elegance and grace, a luminary such as myself. You know, God all placed us all here for a reason. And um, I'm very grateful for you all tonight. Everyone who tapped in, thank you to all the amazing, amazing 
We had some amazing guests here tonight, y'all. Let's give them a round of applause.